Uh, with that, I'm going to skip over to tab seven. Uh, and we're going to start with our first big uh, move, the uh, green centerpiece. And uh, Stacy has a variety of updates for you. There's been some major changes here that we need to uh, council direction. Uh, and then we'll break at 1135 and go to the van and go to Old Town. Okay. All right. So just so you all know, uh, I can't stand talking with a microphone because I can't my hands so forgive me if it's not as smooth as normal all right so as Donna mentioned we wanted to give you an update on where we are with the Leela um, partnership and and how things are progressing with the um, master's strategy in terms of the University of North Texas their their team is working under uh, uh, the Airy Institute umbrella which is kind of their um, ecological um, Institute in at the university that covers all things nature, and it's a it's one of the longest standing institutes in, at the university, and actually has has been pretty pretty prominent and active. And it we're trying to get Leela ingrained in, and we've had conversations with their um, institute board and the like, making sure that the president knows about Leela and what a value it can be to UNT. Um, and we have received uh, a letter with their approval of the latest master strategy update. However, it came with a caveat of no long-term commitment to the strategy. And there's been some wavering of their commitment to funding their staff that's currently on site. Um, now, from the board, from the ARI board, we keep getting Leela's important. Y'all need to take advantage of it. Um, but, and what we've heard from their staff is there's been no formal um, indication as whether they're going to continue their funding. So, we have some questions about that. And, Don, I don't know if you want to say much more than that. So, Council. Um, We've worked long and hard on the partnership. As you know, we were not originally on the lease for Lila. We were added to that lease because of what came out of the 2025 planning. Uh, and it's, it's been a long road with the university. Uh, I, um, I have concerns about commitment. We split the staff. We actually funded the education positions. Uh, they uh, funded really... Um, Ken and uh, Richard's restoration, uh, the restoration position, which we think is very, very important uh, to the success of Leela. But it looks like that uh, is going to be coming to an end. So uh, what I plan to do, I was on the phone with the Corps of Engineers yesterday. Certainly this is the, the property of the Corps of Engineers. Um, uh, we're on that lease um, because of the Corps. And so... So certainly the conversation needs to be with the core. And, and so what I'm going to recommend is that the city sends a letter to the university for clarification of what their stand is in relationship to supporting this partnership. You can't be a true partner if you're not participating. So you have to participate from a financial standpoint. It can't be just the city and LISD. So we're going to want ask for some verification of where they are. Uh, what we understand now is that funding may end as early as August for those two positions. And that is of great concern. So we're going to be seeking clarification uh, of where that is with the university. And then we'll be bringing a report back to the council on that. Questions? Yeah. Wonderful. So the next uh, partner on that we've kind of been working with has been the Audubon Society. And recently we had a meeting with um, Brian. Brian Trustee and some of their representatives about what the future would be moving towards the Nature Center. And truly what's happened in the last three or four years is Brian has been promoted to the Central Flyway Vice President. And there's been not great leadership here in Texas and their capacity not only to lead their facilities but to also fundraise at the same time. Um, Brian was a unicorn in that sense. And 
so they're not going to be able to come on board as a partner to run the Nature Center in the future as we had, had anticipated. They still support the project. They think it can be an important component of uh, preservation and focusing on nature here in the, in the triangle. But what really can't make a long-term commitment in terms of financially or staff-wise of coming in to run the facility. Uh, we're current, as Donna mentioned, this is a lease of Army Corps of Engineer prop property and we're working on the extension of that lease, but we're also, um, as she mentioned, looking at changing a little bit of the partnership up right now and uh, Mr. McAllister and the local group has been supportive of us moving forward with a different structure there, which we're really excited about. And then what we're um, even more excited about is LISD is all in. They've signed the master strategy, they've signed the interlocal agreement, and being aware of the struggles we've had with other partners, they're ready for us to um, maybe focus on a different strategy for Leela and the Nature Center. And so y'all were talking about plans and, and stuff, and the, I, I, this just came to me, is that we always have this plan that we're going to go and smooth sailing to the to the finish line and then along the way you have something that looks like a ninja warrior uh, uh, um, course and but you still get there right and it makes you that much stronger and sometimes you have to tweak the plan but it doesn't mean that we're still not invested that you're still not heading towards towards that um, goal post so uh, sorry <laughs> so while the changes are a little disappointing that the partners we had originally started the the um, the journey with um, aren't going to maybe maybe they're not going to get to the goalpost or they're just going to be riding in a different car when we get there. Um, it really gives us an opportunity to refocus on uh, Leela and what we see for the Nature Center, but also the entire green center centerpiece. And I think sometimes we key just on what's happening to the at the Nature Center and that goal, and kind of let off to the side that there's an entire huge green centerpiece that we can focus on and need to be focusing on. In terms of the Nature Center, this kind of gives us an opportunity to reimagine the vision of the facility and be able to leverage LISD uh, funds. We've talked to Dr. Rogers a little bit about this plan. He is taking it to his board and we continue to be in, in conversations and we're really um, um, excited about how enthusiastic he was about this opportunity. And as we started and we were, we were moving down the, the road of what the Nature Center was going to be, you'll remember that LISD originally was going to come in and participate in the building of that. And then there were some issues maybe with Bond Council and how their uh, board felt about putting money into this, this piece of property when they still owned and operated Liz Dola off of 121. And while that was a struggle for a little bit for us to understand, this kind of gives us an opportunity to, re re to view that situation in a different, in different tone, different light. And maybe what we could do is we could start seeing Leela and Liz Dola as one piece of property. You know, I'm pretty sure a bird doesn't see the property line or the ownership or what the um, Denton County Appraisal District says in terms of who owns it. So, um, and it brings the funds that LISD has reserved for improving Lisdola back into the fold of how we can create this center, or these centers. So we thought about how we might have dual centers, that on the east side at Lisdola, we could focus on the educational component, making sure that we have classroom facilities and labs so that not only would we um, host kids right now, I think we have fifth graders all coming to, to um, Leela, but we could focus on all the grades in LISD and introducing them to the value of this space. Uh, like we said, they have some money set aside. And then on the west side, we could focus on recreation and general access, like we've been you know, trying to educate people about Leela and drive them there. Plus, all of the recreational amenities exist on the west side right now. And in terms of our immediate community and neighborhoods, it is the closest to, to our neighborhoods right now. 
So that would give us an opportunity to leverage both institutions' funds for construction and management, where we had talked about needing the Audubon to come in and run the facility. Maybe what could happen is that we don't need that anymore. We can rely on current um, staffing complements, maybe a little bit of an increase, but not much. Um, we can maximize our resources for both the conservation, education, and recreation access. And you'll remember that most of the uh, restoration efforts are going on over here on the east side. Well, if that's closest to the LISD site, and we've got a full complement of students and parents and volunteers, maybe we can engage them in some of that preservation and restoration effort that we're going to lose if UNT doesn't fund those staff members. So, and then another thing that would, would be awesome about this, and Gina brought this up, so I have to give her a, okay, a big uh, hats off, is that it increases the visibility of Leela from the east side of town. And you get a lot of people moving back and forth just wondering, why is there this wooded area with nothing going on right here in the middle of my drive? And it's the closest to connection to Castle Hills. So being able to immediately connect them with that space is, is a great um, thing. Another thing it does is it creates time for us to to deal with what the unknown impacts of the dam repair project are going to be. So we received an update um, from Stacy, who, who is the project manager at the Corps, great name, uh, the other day. And so you know it's going to go well. There might be a few bumps and crevices that happen like that, but they'll eventually get there. So they are going to award the construction contract for the first phase, which is along this area. Um, in March, which after that they should know exactly what their schedule is going to be and be able to give us a more solid time frame. But the Corps has let us know that starting in May and June, we need to see increased, we will be seeing increased construction uh, vehicles in, inside the fence line, moving stuff around, getting ready for mobilization, and that we should see increasing traffic within the next two years once that happens. Um, so that's going to be a, a pretty big impact. And wh what they're going to do is um, they're going to create a um, alternate route down to um, our facilities along the dam, which will give us an opportunity maybe in the future to put another trail system in there and create connectivity. But there's going to be a lot of of um, displacement of things that are there now and people who use it. It's not going to be as um, peaceful, this nature uh, visit that we, we've been touting and, and having, wanting people to come experience. So the first contractor is going to work through 2022. And at the end, late 2021, early 2022, we're going to see a tapering down of that construction uh, traffic within the fen uh, fence lines. And then the second contractor is going to come in, and they're going to be working back on these areas, I believe. Um, and their contract is going to last from 2022 to 2026, with final cleanup of the borrow areas and construction sites ending in 2027. So that's, that's a pretty long time for us to have constant uh, construction traffic in there. As they're coming in and, and getting um, uh, dirt and stuff from the bar borrow source and accessing from different points, um, we're going to learn a little bit about what um, the status of the bridge on, on the eastern side of the property is and what that means for us long term in terms of mobility between what would be the two uh, nature um, center points, but also for, if you'll remember on our trails master plan, that is identified as a hike and bike trail thing, and we need to know what the um, integrity of that, um, excuse me, that bridge is there um, for safety reasons. Yeah. Has it, has it been like that since the floods of 
Yeah, we've looked at it a, a number of times. In fact, I think David is working on a PSA uh, for some renovation and repairs to some of the riprap below that was damaged during that, that high water. Well, that was a little scary to look at when it was coming through. So, Council, we've hit you with this fairly large change to what I feel is uh, really core to the entire 2025 plan. Uh, I will tell you that Dr. Rogers, uh, LISD, is fairly far along in their planning of what they call a dome. And I don't know that I'm totally clear on what that is, but that is what they had planned uh, to build at Lisdola. Uh, the way it's been described to me, it's a facility that actually creates uh, emergency type safety uh, for students that are visiting. And that's really all I know about it. So when I talked to Dr. Rogers, he told me that, that this would be a big change and that they're fairly far along. I, I have not talked to him since I think he's talked to his board. I'm hoping to get some um, direction from him next week. Um, I think this could be a very, very successful partnership. The devil is always in the details because what we would be doing, and I have had conversation with our bond council, so if we were to issue 4B debt, uh, that would have to be a long-term lease uh, with the LISD. And that's certainly been done many, many times. Stacy can give you examples of that um, throughout the state of Texas. I think it could be a really good partnership I think Audubon uh, would still come to the table, not so much to manage the facility, uh, but to uh, partner with us as far as their education programs, uh, their exhibits, and those type of things. Brian Trusty believes in Leela. He believes in the Nature Center. They want to be a part of it. But with the financial problems that Audubon has had over the last several years, they cannot commit to um, the actual management and that really changes the look of the nature center because if you'll remember when we did the charrette process a lot of that nature center was designed around what Audubon needed to make it a successful Audubon facility mm -hmm. things like a gift store uh, things like you know a really large type of uh, hallway so or not hallway but facility so that you could have weddings and events that may not be as uh, you know as important certainly to us or to LISD. So in the end, you might have a much smaller facility, uh, a less expensive facility, making it more uh, feasible for us to manage it internally along with the LISD. And and Stacy has some uh, good ideas. There's some I've, I've talked to Tim McAllister at the Corps of Engineers. He likes the concept. He is supportive. Uh, Stacy, you want to talk a little bit about management, some of the ideas you have for management? Um, sure. Uh, well, let me start with what, what we would see the west side looking. We've talked a little bit about the east side being focused on the classrooms and labs. And then the west side would, would be a um, souped up uh, trailhead on maybe, maybe steroids, um, legal ones. Um, and what we would look at here is that we would continue to have staff here. This is where people would access the point for recreation. So we might have a small exhibit, a small um, concession area where people can rent kayaks and things to make their experience at, at Leela a little more enjoyable. That is also where our staff would continue to be because we would be hosting um, kids not only from LISD but other places in the recre on the recreation side, um, and our, our maintenance area would be there too. And we've talked about the idea of we've we already have a, a pretty big complement of of our staff working out at Lila right now. We have uh, the two positions that are funded directly out there doing outreach and programming, but we also have a unit within Park Operation who helps with. Uh, um, in the areas that are supposed to be mowed and maintained to a finer detail, helping with trail maintenance and, and trash removal and maintaining the, the um, pavilion area. And then we've got some ideas on the restoration side where we don't have enough uh, staff right now 
um, to manage that is we could create some key partnerships, is we could look at to the master naturalists who already have a very big presence out there and almost already run the volunteer program at the green at the greenhouse. We also will still have the friends of Leela around who can help manage that. And we've talked a little bit of, of, of changing that structure. And then another thing that Donna and I have talked about with Karen Waltz and Brian Trustee and Tim McAllister are uh, the idea of putting out an RFQ to find un other universities who are interested in using Leela as a research site to do restoration. Um, or study the effects of the environment and, and things going on around us. So we've got some ideas, and as soon as we get in a, a more um, firm word from uh, UNT, we can start moving on some of those things. I think it's also important to say is that uh, Ken uh, Seigman and Richard, oh, I fail me, um, Dolish. Yeah. They, they, um, their work should not be, um, the importance and prominence of, of their work shouldn't be belittled because of the institution that they're, they're associated with. They are important co um, components of, of Leela, and we want to make sure that as they're tapering down, we honor them, but also extract as much knowledge as we can, because for the last seven years, they've helped create Leela and do some of those big restoration efforts. So we are uh, trying to do that. So, and one thing that will help us with the creation of this west side, um, oh, east side, west side, we could do a whole musical. I've got it all already. Okay, um, is going to be, we're about to start the interpretive plan process for Leela. We've hired a, a company to come in and uh, walk us through uh, the creation of this plan. And an interpretive plan is really a formalized way to tell our story and to help enhance visitor experience at Leela. You know, it's just kind of been piecemealed together so far based on employees' interest out there, what people have asked us about. So we're going to bring in a team that's going to help us really define and hone what that story should be and how we can help people enjoy Leela more and it be through exhibits, our programming, and signage. So we don't also always don't have to be right on site to tell the story. So we're really excited about that. That's going to start in April, and you'll get invites to be involved in that, in that process. So uh, we're really jazzed about that. Another thing that it'll do is it'll tell us what should be included at each of these centers, programmatically, signage-wise. Maybe we could... Um, change a little bit of what we have in mind for the recreational access, access to, to tell that story. We're also hoping that it helps us determine what should our entry points look like? What should that first, that first impression of Leela be? So we're really excited about that. Um, so what? the management of if there were a joint facility, we would probably take Right, so uh, I've been um, involved with several joint uh, management um, agreements before with uh, a school district in, in my previous lifetimes. And uh, what we had, with the way that we structured it was, uh, like Donna said, during the, the, the school year, the, I, the ISD is heavy on programming and making sure the facility is running. And then in the summer, and maybe in the out of school time or after school time, um, time frame, the, we take over. We, we take over programming and can utilize the facility so that this, the east side doesn't shut down June 1st through August 15th. That that still becomes an access point. It still becomes a place that people can visit. Maybe our summer camps are run out of these points and uh, general access then isn't, isn't um, denied or complicated on the west side. So I think there's some really good ways that we can look at that and that it also helps us um, share the cost of everyday management of the facility. It's not just getting it up and up and uh, running. It's about the continued uh, maintenance and sustainability and access. So, Council, I'd like to hear from you because certainly in the future, uh, what 
I'm trying to process everything that's been, been said. Um, I think Leela is, is, you know, we've got it as the centerpiece of our master of the vision, and uh, I think we need to do everything we can to make sure it succeeds. I'm, I don't know what that means, but and I know it means. I know one thing it means is money, but uh, <clears throat> but I think all of our public input indicated that it was something that people want. So um, so we need to keep moving on it. Well, I actually think there's some advantages of going this direction. The Audubon Center always sounded great, but it seemed like we're constantly who's what partner is flunking out this time on us, you know, and we would get this one into the corral and the other one would wander off. Then we'd get them in the corral and the other one would wander off. And it's like, yeah, it, tired. yeah it just seemed like it was, it was just never going to happen. So uh, having the two and I mean, for Liz Dola to get used, I think them having their educational part of it makes sense for them and for LISD, so it really kind of depends on what our trailhead on steroids and making sure that we get the, you know, the kayak inputs and all that working and, um, you know, it, it might be the right scale that we need to have, but, you know, what is that trailhead on steroids? Brandon. Yeah, I think it's time to stop trying to chase uh, <laughs> UNT and try to, and the Audubon thing, it was always a moving target, it seemed like, from, from the beginning. We definitely want to invest in this. I think the key thing is that whatever that dome is that they started, whatever we build out there initially, we need to make sure that we are working together so we're not building one little piece of some thump something, that we get one thing in there and maybe leave some space for expansion if we have an opportunity later down the road where, where we can do like the wedding reception type thing, but get the base model of what we need there that works for Louisville ISD and, and the city instead of like these. It sounds like right now they're kind of down the road on wherever they're at. We, we need to catch up and kind of get on one accord. Okay. Peter. So I'm, I'm constantly going back to what are we trying to do with this space? And in my mind, the fundamentals are getting public engagement, getting people to get out there and use the space. Um, so this concept of the east-west connectivity, um, you know, linking uh, the, to the ISD and getting kids out there, those are always been fun fundamentals to me on, on the success of this space. Um, I still want to figure out, I think, how can we create a contiguous linkage between East Hill and Lake Park? Um, I think that being able to hop on a trail and, and come all the way across town is, you know, speaks to what Bright's trying to do as well. Um, and I know we talked a little bit about the Velo Web, and one of those connectors comes through this area. Um, so to me, the building is awesome, but I think we can still function and, and meet the core requirement, which is to activate the space for residents. Um, so, you know, the kayak spaces, I think, are awesome, that, that north-south south connectivity. So if this just means we have to reset on a building, as long as we're building trails and getting connectivity through that space, I think that's the number one priority. Um, the building is awesome. I will fully support whatever we can do to figure out how to finance it because I think it brings a different group of people in. Um, but frankly, if we can call some of the, uh, the cats that we're herding, um, like Brent, Brent's analogy there, um, we'll have more control and I'm okay with spending more money on staffing to activate that space. Yep. I'm down to finish writing your notes. <laughs> so, where to start? 
big move number one. This is big move number one, right? It's yes. big move number one. It's, um, it's a phenomenal asset that any city would, be, would love to have. It's the, it's the um, Central Park of New York to them. They're phenomenal green asset. It's what makes New Yorkers able to step out of the city. And so this is our Central Park. This is our New York Central Park. It's a different animal, but it's our Central Park. And not a lot of cities really have an opportunity to have something like this. And so that makes it, to me, all the more special. Even if there were no big move number one, it would still be the crown jewel in, in many ways to me of what we have as an asset. And I'm not going to criticize the past, but let's, let's do something with it. Um, it's, it sits there. It's such an opportunity. It's, it's, it's such a phenomenon. Um, and so I, you know, I mean, I'm always going to look at the numbers, but I don't think you can bring me much that I will, if it makes sense, that I would turn down. Um, the building, uh, the one thought I had is, uh, I, and I'll kind of, you know, tag off of what you said, it draws a different group. Um, it engages a different audience than the trails or the kayak, or potentially does, or maybe it connects them into the trails and kayak that they hadn't previously uh, had an interest in, and that's a good thing too. Um, my thought on the building is that uh, the event space, I think, in time has great benefit of introducing yet another audience of people who come out there for a wedding and suddenly go, well, this is amazing. I didn't know this was here. But do I need the event space now? I think, again, I'd, I'd want to look at the numbers, but I'd want to design, if I'm building a building, I would want to design a building that if the event space is not there now, there is the ability to add the event space later. It's planned into the design that it could be added later so that if the opportunity arises, if the economics are right, if the, you know, the mindset is there to, to have that function added, that we wouldn't be going, gee, I, I wish we'd planned for that. So let's plan it in. Um, because I think it, again, just brings another audience. But I'd do anything. I don't want to exploit Leela because I, don't, I think you exploit it, you destroy it. But I want to promote it to the use that it can and should have. And, um, you know, if the opportunity's there, I want to go for it. Okay, Council, that's a solid direction for us. I understand that uh, we'll take the next steps. It's all going to be about LISD's response. Um, but what I just heard from all of you is that even if that doesn't work, we should continue to look for alternatives because this space is important to our community. We need to make it the, the most that it can possibly be. So, Mayor, we are at a point that we probably need to leave for lunch. It's almost 11.30, 11 11.18. We could take a break and then go to the van. Stacy has more good news for us uh, after we come back at 2 o'clock. Okay, you can come back and leave at 11.30. Uh, we could go on and take a break and, and go to the bus if you wanted to. Okay. So I'll have the bus. Um, would you like the bus out front or the double doors out here? The double doors are right here. The restrooms are out here. It's your, your decision. Are the double doors open now? The ones over the outside the room? Yeah, outside the room. Yes, sir. Okay. Because they weren't. Okay. Take 30 or whatever. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure we can get back in, but the, we'll pick you up at the little the south end right outside the double doors here. Outside the conditions. Yes, sir, 1130. Okay. How, how, so, big, how big is the bus? A little reset. 15 seats. Where will we be with it?